again. This is English Concertina for Beginners, number four. If you've uh, found this and uh, you haven't seen one, two and three, then you might like to check those out quickly, see what we've been up to. Um, in this particular one, I want to uh, work on Go and Tell Aunt Nancy. Not a very exciting tune, <clears throat> but something that I think you will be able to learn to play fairly quickly, at least get the notes in the right order. But I want to concentrate on another aspect of playing the concertina because it's more than simply getting the notes in the right order. Okay, so that's what I want to concentrate on. Now, <clears throat> on the left hand end of your box, <clears throat> you need to find the beginning of your C scale. If you've been looking at the other, um, the other clips, video clips, you'll have been playing your C scale, something like this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Now you'll remember that um, some of the tunes we looked at in, in lesson three uh, started on the third note of the scale. We're playing notes from the scale of C, so the third note is C, D, E, that note there. And we saw how we could get a bit of Beethoven. How we could get In the Bleak Midwinter. was the beginning of Three Blind Mice. And so on, okay. So, go and tell Aunt Nancy is the one I want to concentrate on, because it does only use those five notes for the whole tune, okay. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if you think of other musicians, performers, singers, doesn't matter what instrument, if you think about what is it that you enjoy about their performance, Generally, it tends to be, in my opinion, uh, a number of things. They need to look as though they are enjoying singing or playing the piece. They need to convey to me that there's some kind of emotional involvement in what they're doing. Um, and I say these things because, you know, mobile phones can have a ringtone that will play go and tell our Nancy. And I think if you imagine what that sounds like, it sounds rather flat. The notes are played in the correct order, but there's no <coughs> musicality, or, or there's a lot of facets of musicality that are missing from the mobile ringtone. For example, you have a note here, the E note, on the left hand end. Whoops, there. So I keep making mistakes. <laughs> you get warts and all with this. So the E note. Now we could simply play a bit like a ringtone would do on a phone. But that E note can be played in a variety of ways if you think about it. You have the bellows, you're in control, so the note can go from nothing to quite loud. It can go from quite loud to nothing. You can use vibrato, like a singer would use. Hope that's coming across clearly on the video. Each particular note in a tune can have any or all of those qualities. And that's what makes the thing more musical. And I, I'd like to labour this point because I know a, I, I see a lot of players who concentrate on learning a lot of tunes. And what they are doing is getting the notes in the right order. But every tune is played with the same kind of feel and flavour. And because they've concentrated on getting together um, a catalogue of tunes um, with the notes in the right order, none of them actually sound very musical when they're played. So that's what I'd like to try and investigate a bit with Go and Tell Our Nancy. 
So, there's the beginning of the tune. <coughs> Excuse me. Try and find your, your E on the left and your D on the right, and we'll play through the tune. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. I hope I'm demonstrating just a little, I hope it's coming across, how each note needs to be thought of uh, and, and played with some care and with, with, with some thought. Other ways you could play the tune. different feel simply by adjusting the way in which I'm playing. All I'm trying to get you to do is to play the first tune that you play with a sense of um, musicality. Okay, So have a little play around with it. Think about each note, how, how each note is a, uh, the attack of each note, the length of each note, what happens whilst the note is playing, whether the volume increases and fades or you know does the opposite. Okay. Let's see whether we can find an, an, another another interpretation. <laughs> it helps if you get the right notes. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> we're getting towards the end. What I'd like you to consider is that each and every tune that you learn to play, it's not simply a matter of learning the notes and the order of the notes. The mobile phone ringtones do that, and if you think about it, when you hear them, there's lots and lots of elements of music missing from the mobile phone ringtone. And you don't want to sound like that when you're playing. You want to sound as though... You're in control of the bellows and the way that the air is pushed over the bellows, just in the same way that a singer controls how the air is pushed over the vocal cords and whether they use vibrato, whether they belt the song out or whether they come down to a very quiet point. Yeah? Um, I do find using the arms, getting the arms off of, instead of being there, getting the arms up in the air helpful because the weight of the arms falls down through the ends of the bellows. Okay, I hope that's helpful because, you know, if you do try and put some of that into effect on all the tunes you play, then you'll have a different feel for all of those tunes. Okay, that's all for now. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>